a traditional technique that is still important today. It determines sharpness of an image from front to back, essential for landscape and architectural photography, as well as other subjects, and is variable. Focus stacking was intended for macro photography, where depth of field hardly exists. A knowledge, a basic knowledge of depth of field and the hyperfocal distance will often resolve these issues, unless sharpness is necessary from one inch in front of the camera to infinity. Depth of field is determined by three basic elements, focal length of lens, aperture and physical size of sensor. Now, in the days of 35mm film, we had only to consider the first two, as the size of 35mm film was a constant factor. Today, we work with at least three different digital sensor sizes that also affect depth of field. Because of this, it is almost impossible to present a depth of field scale for any given camera and lens in context with other camera systems and may be the reason why technology has taken over this important task. Nevertheless, understanding depth of field enhances the photographic experience, particularly when it becomes necessary to tweak the computerised camera settings. When a camera focuses on a subject, depth of field extends in front of the subject and behind by unequal amounts, but at a constant ratio, known as the one-third, two-thirds rule. The amounts are variable, affected by aperture, lens and sensor size. Taking an imagined situation, if depth of field extends one foot in front of the focusing point, it will be two feet behind, the exact amounts affected by the factors already mentioned. Already in this shot, the background is unsharp. For landscapes, depth of field will be greater. Basically, the amounts are a small aperture towards f22 increases depth of field, a large aperture towards f2.8 reduces it. Furthermore, a wide angle lens increases depth of field further, a telephoto does the opposite. Add to this the sensor size, something we did not have to consider when shooting in 35mm film, and the numbers get rather complicated. If cameras do this electronically, why bother with the theory? The answer is often brought home to me with some of the questions I am asked about my photos. Because of low light inside a church or a stately home, this will dictate a large aperture to avoid an underexposed image. Yet at f4, at 200 ISO and handheld, I can achieve uniform sharpness from front to back for a composition that would usually require a smaller aperture to increase depth of field. Because a micro four thirds sensor increases depth of field at any setting combination, this shot would be more difficult with full frame without increasing the ISO or requiring a small aperture and of course the use of a tripod. I am in a National Trust property. Permission could be sought to use a tripod but it may involve a fee. A case of understanding traditional photography beyond the computerised settings from any camera to be aware of one of the major advantages of micro four thirds. It is helped using a wide angle lens increasing depth of field but the unexpected answer is 
micro four thirds technology where a smaller sensor has increased depth of field at all settings. Not to mention image stabilization while hand holding this at a third of a second. This brings in its wake a further element of confusion where some experienced photographers assume, yes they assume, that you cannot have limited depth of field with micro four thirds. Understanding the basic theory of depth of field beyond what a camera does, instead how it is controlled by aperture and lens, this will avoid misinterpretation. Here a shallow depth of field has been created with a telephoto lens at f8, an aperture that I have learnt through experience and often mistakes will keep the whole foxglove sharp. But there is more! Yes, where does infinity start? Might be a daft question, but in landscape photography it is not always the distant horizon. It can be nearer. Where would depend on the focal length of the lens, aperture and sensor size. But as an example, with micro four thirds, to ensure a sharp foreground for my landscapes in strong light, I accept that infinity commences at 150 feet from the camera using a standard or wide angle lens, zoom or prime. To increase depth of field in this example, Bringing the foreground into focus, I detach autofocus and move the focusing point forward to around 50 feet. This, of course, brings depth of field scale forward without losing sharpness at infinity. This is the hyperfocal distance, that is to say, creating the greatest depth of field at a given aperture and lens focal length. It can be increased or decreased by lens choice and aperture, the exact amount dependent on sensor size. Implementing this will require a certain amount of trial and error, as depth of field scales are usually only found on prime lenses and focusing distances are no longer engraved on lenses. Therefore, success is largely based on experience. However, we can get some idea of what is happening with this micro four thirds f 1.8 prime lens that has a focal length of 17 millimeter, that is 34 in full frame. So it is a modest wide angle optic compared say to a standard or telephoto lens and it increases depth of field at any aperture setting. Now by shifting the ring back on the lens I can change the focusing from auto to manual disclosing the depth of field scale applicable to this lens and sensor size. Practice makes perfect. Well that's what my music teacher said, something that can be applied to anything artistic, particularly a craft. Easier to understand when trying to play the piano, but when photo technique is replaced by technology, do we really understand what is going on? Most necessary when things don't work out for the best. Computerized technology is not an answer, only an aid can be very useful, but not always.